Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor, yet another video podcast as always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today is a special video because we're just hours away from the first ever flight of the Boeing 777X. What is a test flight? What is that little cone that's hanging behind the tail of the aircraft? And what should you be looking for? Stay tuned. Boeing 31016, Delta Right guys, so the reason I'm doing this video is because we have a lot of discussions inside of the Mentor Aviation app where people are asking loads of questions. Why didn't the 777 take off yesterday? Why do they have to take that specific runway? What is that thing that's hanging uh, behind the aircraft and why don't they take the gear up? So what I want to do today is I just want to tell you a little bit about what a test flight actually is. So what you have to understand is that a test flight is actually not the beginning of the test program. Okay, A test flight is needed because it's part of the process to certify a brand new aircraft. Now the 777X is supposed to be a brand new aircraft seen in the eyes of the FAA which is the authority that's going to you know allow it to fly. But the test flight and the whole test program is basically based on three different phases. You have the preparation which is what's been taken years and definitely the last few months to do. You have the execution, which is the test flight that you're going to see and which is going to be referred to as a test point by the flight engineers. And then you have the evaluation and the data collection which comes afterwards. So these three points is what Boeing is doing at the moment. Okay. Um, you would have seen over the last year or so that they have done a lot of testing of the 777X already. So there's been testing that they've done on the ground inside of hangars. One of them I did a video about, which was the ultimate load test that they did. They will have done taxi testings up and down the runways, up and down the taxiways to see how the aircraft is performing. And while they're on the ground, they will also test most of you know configuration, for example. How do the flaps extend? How do the rudder move when the pilots are inputting things onto the controls, so on, okay. But of course, the first flight is very, very special. It's the culmination of maybe a decade of work for the whole engineering team. It's a very emotional thing for a lot of the engineers. It's likely that you're gonna see grown men cry today when the aircraft finally takes off. But what you have to understand, guys, is that the first flight is just that. All right. It is the first time that the aircraft actually leaves the ground and they're going to try to make that as little complicated as possible. Okay. So on board of this uh, 777X you're going to have two potentially three very qualified test pilots. Now test pilots they are pilots who have special training to do this kind of flights. Okay. They will have normally they have military background even though that's not a requirement but they will have extensive knowledge about a very similar type probably the 777 or other similar types uh, and they will have done a special special course on how to actually do test flying. All right. So it's not just a, a pilot taking off the line. These are these are people that know exactly what they're doing and the risks that are associated with actually flying an aircraft the first time. Now, when I say risks, the risk on a type like the 777X are very low because um, the kind of computer modeling that the that Boeing has to use now are extensive. All right. There are very very good models of how this aircraft is going to perform when they take it when they take it for the first flight. It was a completely different thing back in the day when, when they only had like very very simple wind tunnel testing and the first time the aircraft flew it was the first time they actually knew how it was going to perform. Here the test pilots have a good idea about how it's going to perform. It's likely that they've done quite a lot of simulator flying before um, with all of the computer models that they have. So they they pretty much no. But anyway, you need to have special training because they will go through a test program which is extensive and it's going to bring the aircraft to the absolute limits of what it's supposed to be done. And why? Why do they have to take it to the limits then? Well, part of the test program is to verify the computer models that they've had, but it also is there to find the test points 
to build the operational handbook of the aircraft. So when I, for example, will be flying this aircraft in the future, then I'll be able to go into a manual and I'll be going to look at diagrams to see, for example, how the aircraft performs if I want to fly it with the gear down or if I want to fly it with the flaps out at a certain altitude. Well then, you know, I can just go in and I can just look in the handbook and see, okay, so it will take this much fuel or it will glide this far or so on. All of those test points comes from the test flight program. Right? So that also goes for, for example, how many G-forces can I take out before the aircraft stalls? At what speed does it stall? How does it actually perform when it stalls? All of these things, someone, the test pilots, will have tested out. But that brings us to this first flight and what you'll be looking for. So onboard the aircraft are not only the pilots, there are also going to be at least two flight engineers. Okay? These engineers are sitting in the back and they are taking in loads and loads of data. Everything that the aircraft does during the taxi out, during the beginning of the takeoff roll, the takeoff roll, the first feet over the uh, uh, runway as it's climbing out, all of that is being recorded. And what are they looking at then? Well, they're looking at things like for example the external pressures of the aircraft, so the static pressure, the dynamic pressure in different parts of the aircraft. And here, by the way, is where that little cone that's trailing behind the, uh, the tail of the aircraft comes in. That cone is called the trailing cone pressure transducer. All right, try to say that five times quickly. And it is exactly that, it measures pressures at that point. And because it's sitting there where it's you know, hanging just at the tip of the, uh, the rudder and behind, it's actually a uniquely good position for taking you know, certain pressures, I don't know exactly what they're called. But that's what it is, it's a pressure monitoring unit, okay? So as the aircraft takes off, the flight engineers and their computers are going to be taking in things like static pressure, dynamic pressure, different pressures at different parts of the aircraft. They're going to be looking at vibrations. They're going to be looking at how the aircraft actually handles as the pilot's inputs, control inputs, how is it actually responding. They will be looking at things like um, how the engine is performing, how much fuel is it using, is it causing any, any uh, vibrations, is there anything like rudder flutter for example or anything like that that's appearing that they didn't count on because no matter how good these uh, computer models are there is always a possibility that the computer models have missed something and only real flight testing with real air can show exactly how the aircraft is going to perform and if there are any issues and this by the way is why they will be doing this with the gear down Okay. And that's because as they keep going with their flight testing program, they will be expanding the envelope more and more. So the first few flights is going to be in the low speed regime. So that will be in the takeoff configuration, flight with gear down and then coming in and in the landing configuration. They don't want to do anything more than what's in their testing program because anytime that they do more, there might be you know, a risk of something going wrong. And of course, you know, taking the gear up and then finding out that there is an issue with the gear and having to land with partial gear up on its first ever flight in front of thousands of, of um, press cameras and you guys watching the live stream would be extremely embarrassing as well. But the main thing here is that they, don't, they just want to test each system by itself. So you'll be taking off, you'll see them flying away with the gear down, they'll be flying out into a test area where they'll be doing some predetermined maneuvers to check all of these things that we've been talking about and probably thousands more that I haven't mentioned. And then they will eventually come in and land and taxi in. That's what they will do in the beginning. And then for each test flight, they are going to expand this. They're going to um, make it fly a little bit faster. They're going to be taking the gear up and then eventually they will be going into maneuvers like, for example, um, steep turns, stalls, uh, over speeding of the aircraft, um, you know, handling during extreme crosswind, uh, handling in Arctic conditions during extreme temperatures, both high and low. And the, the test program can take months if not years to complete but in this case since we're dealing with a an extension of a pre-existing type it's likely to go a little bit faster than that so that's what you can expect guys from this first flight and that's why they're flying with the gear down and that is what that little cone is and this is what i wanted i wanted you to know what it is that you're actually looking at when you see this fantastic huge aircraft taking off for the first time
Now, if you have more questions or if you just want to hang out with more aviation enthusiasts as this live stream is going on, I would really love to see you inside of the Mentor Aviation app. We will be putting the live stream up inside of the app so you'll be able to see it from inside of the app and then you can go into the chat and you can ask questions to other pilots like me or Ava or any of the other professional pilots in there. There's thousands of aviation enthusiasts who are in either the forums or the chat every day and you can also get your absolute banging fresh aviation news inside of the app. They will be pushed out to you if there's something that's really important. Otherwise, you can just go in there daily and check out what's going on. We're finding aviation news from all over the globe and we're putting it into the app for you guys to be able to access. Now, let's see how this aircraft performs, shall we? Have an absolutely fantastic day wherever you are. And if you like this kind of things, these kind of updates of what's going on in the aviation industry. Make sure that you've subscribed to the channel and that you highlighted the little notification bell as well. Take care of yourself and I'll see you inside of the app. Bye bye. Right guys, I really hope that you liked that. If you want more content like that, more aviation content, well then check this out. Uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye.